Hi, my name's Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Thanks for popping along to our channel. If you've been here before, it's really good to see you back again. And if it's your first time, I hope you enjoy um, the tutorial today. So what I've got for you today is our uh, Stormy Skies earrings, which uh, match a project we did previously, which I will um, link up here somewhere um, for a Stormy Sky bracelet. So it's pretty much the same thing, but in earrings. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy it. So let's jump straight into it. So here's a sample piece of the earrings that we'll be making today. And to make these earrings, you're going to need the following components and tools. So as far as uh, jump rings are concerned, we're working in bright aluminium. These ones are 16 gauge AWG, which is 1.2 millimeter diameter wire and it has a ring ID of 5.25 millimeters and you're going to need eight of those to make up a pair of earrings. Our next size again in the 16 gauge AWG, um, 3.5 millimeter ID and you're going to need 54 of these ones to make up a pair of earrings. And then lastly we've got these tiny little ones. These ones are 20 gauge AWG which is 0.8 millimeter diameter wire and they've got a ring ID of 2.5 millimeters and you're going to need uh, six of these ones to complete the pair. You're also going to need um, some beads so I've chosen to use some six millimeter check glass round beads. I enjoy the check glass beads uh, they tend to be very consistent in their sizing um, which although is not so important for this bracelet or these earrings sorry it is with others so you need six of those um, a pair of ear wires or posts whatever it is that you prefer to use um, some bead caps so these are just little flower petal bead caps that suit the beads that we've got so six of those you'll also need um, some head pins six head pins and I've used um, some mechanized chain, some manufactured chain. Um, I mean, you could always make up that out of the small uh, jump rings if you've got them, if you prefer not to use the chain. Um, but I've used this one. These um, links take the 16 gauge rings. So just make sure that um, they take 16 gauge, the chain that you use. If not, you may have to make some adjustments to the ring sizes. Okay, and for our tools, we need uh, a pair of wire cutters. So that's to cut our head pins um, and possibly our chain, depending on what sort of chain you've got. We need some round nose pliers. And for the chain mail part, of course, two pairs of smooth jawed pliers so that we don't mail our rings too badly. Ours are from our Zuron range. This one is our chisel nose, this one is our short nose plier. Um, in this case, the finer the nose, the better for this project. So the Stormy Skies is made up out of four units of the Four Winds Weave. So we're going to uh, make those up now. And to do that, we start off by using our 3.5 millimeter ID rings, okay, and making up a short chain of four rings. So I'll just do that now. Okay, so you just put this together whichever way it is that you uh, make up a short chain. And you're going to need four of these little chain units. Okay, so they're just simple chains, four rings long, and you need four of these chain units made up. Okay, so just go ahead and finish making up those four chain units, and I'll meet you back here to show you what we're going to do next. I've created my four pieces of chain that are four rings long. And now the next step is to convert each of these pieces of chain into a four winds unit. 
okay so let's get started with that so we're going to number these uh, chains from left to right one two three and four okay simple now this next bit is a little bit fiddly um, and because these rings are so small it may be a little difficult to see but I'll do my best to uh, make this easy for you And that was my cat making an appearance, excuse that. All right, let's go again. So what we're going to do is we're going to make number one go down, number two sits up, number three sits down and tacks in behind number one, and number four goes up and sits on top of number two. So these are rings two and four up here, and then the bottom we've got rings one and three. Now we want to carefully hold the unit like that and we want to pick up a ring and we're going to put it through rings two and four, okay? So straight through those two rings, joining them together. So we'll do that now. Okay, rings two and four, joining them together. All right. Do that ring up. Okay, holding it back into position. So you can see there that I've joined rings two and four up. Now I want to just turn my little piece around and I'll do the same now to rings one and three. So taking up another ring of the same size, the 3.5 millimeter ID, and just going through, around the eye, and back up through there so that they're joined together. Okay. So this unit here, as it stands, is actually known as a cloud cover unit. But that's not what we want. We want the four winds unit. And to create the four winds unit, we actually flip our work over, so we go from there to this, and then we take what were our connection rings, and we, because right now they're sitting apart, we push them together, okay, so that they sit together, and I, oh, and I drop it. Okay, so we turn it over, we push them together, and our units now look like this. And these are our four winds units. So very carefully, because they are small, place them down in the correct position, and we do that again. So I'll show you once more, because it is very fiddly. We've got our four ring chain, rings numbered one, two, three, and four from left to right. And we want to fold these in a way that ring number one goes down, ring number two flips up, ring number three flips down and tucks in behind ring number one and then ring number four flips up and sits on top of ring number two. Okay, it, I know it's difficult to see, but our final piece looks like that. So rings one, two, three, and four. Okay, so ring one down, ring two up, ring three down and tucks in behind ring number one, ring four flips up, sits on top of ring number two okay and then we want to join these together so we take up another opened ring of the same size and we're going to feed this through these are rings two and four up the top so we're going to feed the rings through two and four so that it joins them together okay 
We put our mess of rings back into position. Okay, so you can see I've joined them together. We want to turn our work around so that we've now got rings one and three sitting up top. We take up another opened 3.5 millimeter ID ring and we join these two together as well. Okay. And then once you've done that, okay, you've got what they call a cloud cover unit. We want a four winds unit, which is slightly different. So what we do to create that is we simply flip our work over so that it looks like this. Now these two rings, this one up here and this one down here, these were the rings that we used to join our chain together. We're going to maneuver those so that they sit next to each other. And then this becomes our four winds unit. Okay. And we set that aside and we do that again for our other two pairs of rings so that we've got a total of four, four winds unit. So I'll go ahead and finish that um, and come back and show you what we do next. I've got my uh, four units made up. I've carefully placed them down in the correct position. Believe me, it'll make your life a lot easier if you do keep them in that position and don't move them around too much. All right, so what we wanna do now is actually join these four units together. So pick up one of your units carefully so that it doesn't fall out of shape, okay? And we're going to take our 5.25 millimeter ring, our large ring, and we're going to feed it through, I'll show you what rings. There's three rings that we pass this ring through, okay? So, holding our unit. I'll just get this position, sorry about that. Okay, so these are the connecting rings that we um, moved together and we want to actually look at so not the bottom connecting ring but the ring next to it so we want that ring we want the top connecting ring and we want that ring behind it okay so one two three they're the three rings that we're going to go through now, I know I'm going to get people saying I should have used different colored rings here. I'm sorry that this might be difficult to see. I actually don't have different colored rings in this size, so I couldn't do that for you. But again, we need to go through this ring here, this ring here, which is our top connecting ring. So this is a chain, this is a connecting ring, and this is one of the chain rings. And that's where we want to put our large ring. So taking up our ring, we go up through the chain one first and then just continue through the connecting ring and the chain ring directly behind it. Okay, and it looks like this. Okay, so again, our three rings, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, and then before we close this ring up, we want to attach another unit to it. So again, carefully picking your unit up. We want to go through the same three rings on our second unit. So looking at that, our three rings are this one here, this connecting ring here, and this ring here. Okay, so one, two, three, and we just feed our large ring up through those three rings. Okay, take it gently. It is a little tricky, but you will get it in there. Okay, if you can't get it in there, then you may need to look at the um, your unit, your four winds unit. Maybe it's out of alignment somehow. It is a little tricky, but it's not impossible. So if it becomes impossible, take your unit off. Make sure you've got 
uh, it facing the right way and try again. So once you've got those two units on there, we just want to close our large ring up. Okay, and that's the first part of connecting our four units, our four winds units together. Now we just want to do that again with another large ring. We go through the same three rings on the other end of this unit that's already connected. So again, those rings are one, two, and three. We go up through the bottom of one, up through the bottom of two, and then straight through into ring three. So this one is a little bit tighter because we've already got uh, a ring connected to it. But as I said, if you just persevere, it will happen. Okay, if you've got your rings aligned correctly. So you can see that going through those three rings, rings one, two, and three. And again, don't close it yet. Grab your third unit and again, feed it through those same three rings. Okay, rings one, two, and three. We go up through the bottom of ring one. Okay, oops. Wait a minute, I haven't got it positioned correctly. There we go. Up through the bottom of ring one, up underneath ring two, and then it goes straight through the front of ring three. So again, as I said, just persevere with it. They are tiny little units, and they do tend to move out of shape fairly easily. So you've got to be very careful with them and make sure that everything is in position. Once you've got it on, close your large ring up. Okay. And you've got your three units in alignment there. Okay, and then we just need to join this unit to the final one. Again, going up through those same three rings that we have been going. Okay, straight through there. And then before we close it up, we pick up our final unit and we go again through those same three rings on our final unit. Okay, making sure you pick up all three of them. Okay, there we go, straight through all three. Close it up. And we've got our chain of four wins there. Now we want to join these two ends together so that it forms our diamond shape. So we take up one more of our large rings. We go to our end unit here. We put our large ring through those three rings like we have been doing. And then we go back to the beginning and we bring that around and we feed our large ring through the three rings that we need to feed it through at the front of our first unit. Okay. And once we've done that, we close it up and it creates our Stormy Skies unit. Okay, so obviously you need to create one of those for the other pair of earrings, but that's it. That's our Stormy Skies unit. Now, um, you can do whatever you want with this. I mean, if you check out our bracelet, you'll be able to see what we did with these units to make a bracelet. Next, though, I'm going to make up 
the beaded units that hang at the chain off the bottom. All right, so I've got my little tray of goodies here. So I've got my beads, my bead cap, and my um, head pin. So I'm just going to feed my bead onto my head pin, then my bead cap on to there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, bend the wire just like that. Now I've got really easy bendable um, head pins. It may be a little bit more tricky depending on what material you're using, but I'm just going to bend that to kind of like a 90 degree. And then I'm going to cut this off about one and a half centimetres. Okay, so if I measure that out to about one and a half centimetres. Okay. And then, I mean, you may do yours differently. This is just the way I've chosen to do mine. Um, I like to create a little bit of a double loop. It gives it a little bit more strength in my eyes. Because the head pins are a fine gauge, I like to give them a little bit more security. So once I've cut it off to about one and a half centimetres, I take my round those pliers and I take the end fairly close to the end of the pliers there. We don't need this to be a very big loop. Okay, and then I just start rolling that towards me, moving my pliers when I need to, and just keep rolling it towards me. Okay, until we're snug up against the bead. Okay, and then what I like to do. You can see that the tail sort of is sticking out there. I like to just come in and cut that off so that it sits just there like that. So we've got a double loop on our bead. Okay, as I said, that's just the way I like to make it up. If you want to do it differently, by all means, go ahead. Um, this is just my preference. So you'll need to do this three beads for each earring. So if you go ahead and do that, um, and I will meet you back here when we're both done. I've got my three completed beaded units, okay, to make up the one pair of earrings, or one, one lot of earrings. And I've gone ahead and cut my um, manufactured chain. So I've got three pieces here. Uh, the longest, I've gone three different lengths. Again, design element totally up to you. I've chosen to have the length of chain two and a half centimeters, two centimeters, and then one and a half centimeters. But as I said, total design choice is yours. Now what I want to do is just connect um, our beads to our chains, one to each chain. And I'm doing that with the 20 gauge 2.5 millimeter ID ring. So just putting one end through the chain and one end through the loop on the bead and setting that aside and just doing that for the other two pieces of chain. So one end through the chain, one through our beaded unit, close it up. Okay. And then our final one, one piece through the chain, one through the beaded unit. Okay, so then what we want to do is we want to take up one of our 3.5 millimeter chain, uh, jump ring, sorry, and we're going to connect these three pieces of chain onto our um, jump ring. So just feeding, I'm going from uh, longest to shortest. You can do it in whatever pattern you prefer. Okay, and then once I've got them all on there, I'm going to close that up. So again, as I said, my chain takes the 1.2 millimeter diameter wire if yours doesn't, you may want to change this out for a slightly thinner gauge. 
um, it'll be totally up dependent on what it is that you do okay so I'm now going to connect this to um, my unit okay and to do that I'm just going to again grab a couple of our 3.5 millimeter ID jump rings and I'm going to go one through there and then through one of the large rings on our unit close it up and I'm actually going to double that ring okay oops just open it up a little bit more there we go so doubled up that ring now now is when you decide whether you want the long one on the inside or the outside of your earrings. Now I'm going to make it to match or do a mirror image I should say of the one I've already made. So I've got the long on the inside. So I'm going to need to turn this one around so that they're matching like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up the big ring that is opposite where the beads are. Just going to open that up a little bit and I'm going to pop on my ear wire making sure I put it on correctly so I don't want it to put it on this way because that then reverses my um, earring I want to make sure that I've got it so the front of what is effectively the front of the ear wire bit that sits at the front of your ear is facing me I'm just going to pop that on there I'm going to close that ring up okay and there you go that's all there is to it that's our stormy skies earrings okay guys that's it that's the tutorial today I really hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it don't forget to give it a thumbs up um, share the video leave a comment all of that would be great and if you really really enjoyed it and you want to see more of what we do um, subscribe to our channel and at the same time don't forget to hit the little bell so that you get all the notifications every time we upload videos okay at the moment we're uploading a project video every Tuesday and hopefully Thursdays very shortly all right so again I hope you guys really did enjoy the video today and that we see you again sometime in the future okay bye